Hey everybody, Antony here. Well, this is my final review of all the music-related events that I caught in London. And what better way to send this off with a review of cellist Stephen Isserlis, who performed at the South Bank Center alongside Kirill Karavits on the podium, and Cleo Gold, who was the principal player of the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Now, I've never really heard of Stephen Isserlis before. I basically heard his name in passing, but when I mentioned his name to my flatmate, Abel, he said a lot of magnificent things about him, and he was totally right. I definitely agreed with everything that he said, especially when Mr. Isserlis performed the cello concerto by Edward Elgar, but more on that later. So yes, this was absolutely a great experience. If I had to put this in five adjectives, it would be this. It was thrilling, powerful, beautiful, elegant, and it was exciting all around. It was just that fantastic. With such illustrious artists like Mr. Isolus and Mr. Kotabitz and Miss Gold, this evening was just fantastic. Now, this evening basically kicked off with Prokofiev's Symphony No. 1. And boy, did this feel like I was listening to an opening of an epic movie. It was just that thrilling with everyone giving their all in terms of just how they were able to make the music sweep and it was just like a huge tidal wave it was just an indescribable feeling that i felt it was thrilling and it was just extremely fantastic from all of the players of the royal philharmonic orchestra the rhythm of this symphony was exciting. It was briskly paced. It was quite hot-blooded at times, but it promises to bring you a lot of action and a lot of thrills and especially a lot of great and very brilliant moments. And that's exactly what I got with the beginning of this concert, basically with Prokofiev's Symphony Number no. 1. And then we have Mr. Stephen Isserlis doing the cello concerto by Sir Edward Elgar. The first movements were basically quite slow, yet at times very thought-provoking. It was just, well, simply put, melancholic, as I would put it that way. It was very melancholic, but at times it builds up to a very exciting moment. And once it builds up, you don't know when to get out of this nirvana. And it's just so thrilling. And then before the intermission, Mr. Isolus played such a very sinuous and very sweet tune on his cello and I thought wow it hit me right here on the heart it was just that touching and just so gorgeous all around and he definitely has such great artistry and great musicianship he is just an example of a very prolific musician he's been performing in all of the major concert houses of all over the world. And it shows just how much experience he has and how much passion he has in his work. That's what I really appreciate about Stephen Isserlis. He was a passionate performer. He basically had a lot of heart to put in the music that he plays. Everything is just so nuanced and so touching that I basically felt like I'm no longer in this mortal world. That's how I felt when I listened to Stephen Isserlis on the cello. 
and Kiri Karabits was absolutely fantastic as the conductor. I could really see it in his eyes when he led the orchestra. Every single movement, every single gesture that he had, he basically played along with them. It was just that involving, it was just so engaging, basically the way that he conducted. And after the interval, we were treated to Rimsky Korsakov's Sheherazad. Now, I thought this was absolutely, repeat, absolutely the highlight of the evening for me, with Cleo Gold as the principal player of the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. I felt that she was able to do her thing very beautifully, very flawlessly, and it was just that fantastic. From the very powerful and very clashing beginning to a more sinuous second movement, which is the... Hang on, let me turn to the right page. Ah, the story of the Kalendar Prince. Now that was just sinuous, but when it built up, it felt like I was watching a herd of gazelles leaping from plane to plane and not knowing when the hell they're going to stop. That was just that exciting. And I basically knew the melody, the one that goes da 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 Basically, I first got in encounter with this uh, tune with my listening to the opera babes, you know, Rebecca Knight and Karen England, the two female artists who formed this classical crossover group. That's how I first encountered this melody. It was through their song, Scheherazade, well, based from Rimsky-Korsakov's composition, and then they added the lyrics, which were in French. That's how I got to know this melody. And boy, the way that this was conducted was just so sinuous, yet when it builds up, it feels like it was just so thrilling. It felt like a mountain formation at the most epic of proportions. And when it closed, it was like, wow, the most exciting explosion that I've ever experienced. And then the third movement, the young prince and princess, I thought was just sweet and lovely with the strings basically giving the sweetest of melodies. And then we have the climax, the festival at Baghdad, the sea, shipwreck on the rock, some surmounted by a bronze warrior. I thought it was a combination of power, finesse, beauty, and a very, very touching and very serene ending. I thought it was just exciting all around. So overall, wow, I was simply impressed by everyone who was part of the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. And special kudos goes to Maestro Karabits, Mr. Isserlis, and Miss Gold for such illustrious artistry. They were just absolutely fantastic all around. Well, that's all for now. I'm quite sad that I'm going to be leaving London because, to be very honest, I was actually here in England ever since I was 13, and until I was 14, 15, 20, and here I am now. Yeah, basically, England has become one of my most favorite countries of all time to be in, and it's actually quite sad that I'm leaving it right now. But hey, at least there's Amsterdam that I'm going to venture to, and I'm quite excited for that. So yes, it is quite sad that I'm parting England because this is a place that has a very, very special place in my heart. Yeah, but all good things must come to an end. So far, I'm almost done packing. I have my documents ready, and I'm actually pretty much good to go. So do expect for tomorrow that there's going to be a a video update regarding my reviews in Amsterdam. So 
do expect that. It will be showing tomorrow evening once I get to my hotel. Until then, this is Antonis signing off and wishing you all a good night.